Hey guys, and welcome to Little Black Book Night One. We are giving you guys a little special live. Um, I'm joined by my boy Risley. We're going to be talking about, you know, our experiences as black men within the UK. Um, and, you know, the story of how when we hit the bottom, what did we do to climb back up? Because I think that's a story that's going around a lot for us as black men. Um, you know, you hit rock bottom, you're not sure what to do, where to go, how to climb off that bottom. So, I decided to bring one of my special loan. Now, before I say anything, ladies, I need you to behave, okay? I need you to behave, okay? Because if you're entering his DMs, come with full hands, okay? Full hands. We don't see coming empty. Come with gifts. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. But Risley, what are you saying, brother? <laughs> yeah, yeah you good, good, man. I ain't saying anything, though, man. I'm mm. good, I'm good, I'm good. How are you? How are you? I'm alive, my G. I'm alive, my G. You get me? Now, you should let the audience know what you are because, right. you know, you're a model, you're a prophet, you know, you're well, a, a, a man. <laughs> wait, 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 where are you getting profit from? From me? You are you like lying? Let's you, you weren't doing the fasting like, them like, days. Yeah, were well, you not doing those? Were well, you not doing the mad fastings those days? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, hey, that fasting used to be mad. Good times. I picked up from you, though. I can't even lie. <laughs> well, it wasn't doing as long as you. I wouldn't say that I'm a fool. Bro. I'm not even a model anymore, bro. Huh? You're still a model. I said, I'm not even a model anymore. Um, no, you're still a model. I used to model. Huh? I'm not you're a model still a model. No, no, no. I, I've told I you, your time is coming. Jobs. I put, I pick up modeling jobs time to time. Like, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. I can't pick up modeling. I can't pick up modeling jobs time to time. I don't have the time. Bro, because if I have time on the weekend and it fits into my schedule, then I can do it. But a lot of time, I don't have time. So, yeah, man. I'm a humble councilman. I work in my mm. local council in mm. children's services. Mm. <laughs> children's what, 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 services. Is, what does your What does your job involve now, though? What's your, mm? What does your job now involve? What does it? Um, you see, what's it involve? So technically, I'm a youth and family practitioner. A lot of people will be like, "Oh, what is that?" So in simple terms, I'll kind of say, "It's like I am an unqualified social worker." That's what work feels like. So um, I can't really give you a day to day in it, but like my main responsibility is to like. Um, it's like working with a young person, but also working with their families in it. So it's like whole um, family work. Um, obviously, every, each case is unique in it. Some families, I might just work with that one child. Other families, I might work with mom, other siblings. Other families, I might just work with a couple of siblings. Um, it just literally depends on what the actual like, referral is. But obviously, a lot of the cases I have are boys that may be involved on stuff like in the roads, what on the roads. Um, or like at risk of obviously transitioning into obviously gang activity and that. So kind of just trying to prevent that. And obviously like what safeguarding them at the same time and helping them just find out what they want to do in terms of their interests and that. So it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. Mm. Oh, no. So I brought that out here, you know, you've you've grown wings, you know, you've become you've become a bird in these in this who 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 cannot fit in the cage anymore, you understand? Now I'm playing, but <laughs> obviously we've known each other for a few years, isn't it? We've known each other for a few re few years and that. Um and obviously we've seen each other at different stages of, of life, you know. Um I'm even trying to remember the first time we met was a gym, right? The gym was when we first met. Yeah. Uh because you post cause, 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 cause you made the YouTube video. I'm not gonna mention what the YouTube video was about. You can you say if you want YouTube to video. <laughs> huh? You yeah, can say if YouTube you want. Video, yeah, you got a very interesting YouTube video. <laughs> no, but it was about um the you that YouTube video it was about like um pornography and that. Oh yes, I That's was saying. Was. Yeah, 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 yeah. So obviously I, I literally watched that video and um like a couple of days later, I'd gone to that gym and I've seen you in there. And I was like, I just saw this guy on YouTube because it came up on like recommended or something. Or, mm. you know, when he was just on YouTube, I was like, rah, like, who's this? But then when I saw you in the gym, I was like, but bear in mind, remember when you used to film? You are film like this way up. So when I was like, yeah. it can't be this hench guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure he got me in. But it's from then, innit? And then from that, of the MK and all of that good stuff. Oh, yeah. All of that was, lovely was stuff, vibe. Man. What's a vibe, bro? What's a vibe? All right, cool. So obviously, yeah, let's right. let's let's kind of like pace it because, you know, I wanted to have a discussion about, um, you know, us because we're two black males in the UK, um, living through, quote unquote, the black male experience, right? Um, where you know 
you, you exit university, you've gone to university, you know, um, you exit university and maybe not sure 100% what you wanted to do. Well, actually, did you know what you wanted to do when you finished university? Not at all. Not at all. Did I even know what I wanted to do in university? Not at all. Um, remember, I went to university. I, <laughs> I went to university because my, my brother didn't go. So mm. what I studied, I studied um, in college, but only because mm. I got thrown off performing arts. I thought that's Zuri all the time. So I wanted to do performing arts, got thrown off performing arts, studied traveling and tourism. So when I went to uni, I studied international tourism management and advertising. But obviously, because it's not really what I had a passion for, leaving uni, it's not like, okay, do you know what? I want to get into marketing or tourism management or I'm saying consumer bit, like all of that stuff. I didn't know what I wanted to do in it. So it was just that whole thing. I had no clue. So what I'm doing now is not related to what I studied at all. Um, but obviously, mm -hmm. at the same time, I've got the degree in it, so I'm not limited. That's what, what made my you main like... thing was in it, like not limiting myself and just having mm -hmm. options. What What so, made you What made you kind of push through university though? Because obviously, if you didn't If you didn't like the course you're doing, bro, <laughs> I wanted to drop out in the first week. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lie to you. I wanted to drop out in the first week. First week, man, I was like, mm -hmm. yo, that's it. I messaged with my mum, I was like, yo, auntie, do you know what? Like, I know I'm the only one in the house that went uni, but I'm trying to dip. Um, so what it was, um, after my, when I kind of got past that first year stage, I was like, do you know, I want to kind of leave. So I've come, I've come back to end. I've come back, I came back home from university and um, there was a lot of like, it was bare, there was a lot of stabbings and like shootings. And I was like, do you know what? I can either stay here and study in London or be obviously up north and just kind of like just stay out of the way. Um, even if I don't really want to be there, but it's better being up there and safe and studying than kind of being here and getting caught in the crossfire because there's a lot of boys that weren't involved and did end up getting caught up in everything that was going on down here. So, um, and on top of that, someone had told me, oh, if you drop out early, um, they take, they, they come for your student loans even uh -huh, worse. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I said, you know what? I'm not I'm not on that. So then obviously got to my final two years and I was like, do you know what? Like, I've kind of been here for like two, three years and it's like if I kind of drop out, I've wasted my time. I'm saying so I'm like, I might as well just get something out of it. Even if it's a thing where I don't remember what I learned or studied, it's just like, do you know what, at least I have this qualification, I've got this paper that I can say, do you know what I got this at the end and and as I said, I was I basically the, I the first person in my house to graduate. So I'm saying Obviously, I don't know where it is across, spread across my family, but I know in my immediate family, I was the first person to graduate. So in a sense, I was kind of like, do you know what? Even if it's not for me, I know that obviously my mom could be proud. My mom could be proud of that. You know that she could say, oh, do you know, I've got a son that went to university. I'm saying so. Her thing was all about, oh, get your education, education, education. So then, once I finally got my education. degree as well, now she don't bug me anymore. <laughs> she say, oh, don't focus on this, don't focus on that, don't focus on this. <laughs> Go and get education. So now I've got my education. I said, don't talk to me about no masters because it's not happening right now. Trust me. But yeah, it was just that drive to just kind of like complete it and not think, like, I feel like I wasted my time, in it. Mm. That wasn't for me, innit? So. All right, talk, talk to it us was. a little bit about your how you grew up because obviously, um, obviously when we said it when we said it ends like you said that's obviously our our areas that we grew up in the hood. Someone might call it the, the hood. Ends. Someone might call it ends. You the know. Hood. You know what was your, what was that growing up for you? Because I want to I want to paint that picture of the fact that you know a lot of brothers will be saying, "Oh, that man, that man went to university. They can't really relate to us." Like you know, we came from a different struggle. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hundred. You know what I'm saying? T tell us a little bit about the background. You get me? All right, let's play. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So I'm allowed to say where I'm from. Should I say it's up to you. Can I say it's up to you, bro. Okay, cool. Whatever you feel like. So, um, that was good. So, obviously, I, I grew up in, in North London. That's not you too precise. Let's mm -hmm. say North London. I grew up in North London. You know? um, obviously, you can only imagine how it was um, in North. So, gang activity, especially my side of North anyways, gang activity, a whole lot of poverty, low household incomes, mums, single parent household, all of that stuff in it. You know how it goes, in it? Um, so obviously a lot of growing up, our olders, our old lot in the area and surrounding areas, they were always involved in it. So whether that be from um, selling drugs to, oh, some of these are even pimping out women. I didn't, I didn't understand this till I got older. 
pimping out women. And some of them were even trying to get like these grown women to sleep with us. And we was about like nine years old. And what? these big boys are like getting the girls. Anyways, that's a whole No, 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 don't stop, don't stop there. Oh, we want to hear that story. Bro, What's going on they, there? They were giving us magnums when we was in like primary school, bro. So Jeez. that's, you got to understand. So the type of environment that it was, our old lot, like to this day, Pizza Hut can't drive onto my estate because of what the man them used to do back in the day. Like, what well, obviously mm-hmm. the old guys used to do back in the day. Pizza Hut can't deliver on my estate. Ice cream van couldn't come around for about five, six years. That was super bad, didn't it? Um, as I was saying, obviously, I, keep, I grew up in a single parent household as well. Obviously, both older brothers. Um, but obviously, we played football, innit? We played football a lot. And obviously, my mum was, um, you know, prayer warrior. So you can't go here, you can't go here, you can't go here. But at the same time, because our area was small and literally my estate was just full of boys. And growing up, my estate was boys. Like, if we wanted a gang, we could have had a gang. So I'm saying that's how much like, it was, innit? Um, so I'm saying, but also you understand, like it was, it was, it was rough, in it. Like it's always been rough. So a lot of my friends, obviously, I've got love and obviously respect for a lot of my brothers, and some of them are still involved. But I get it, you know. Some of them got dragged into it because you know what, they just couldn't do the nine to five. You know what I'm saying, and they couldn't do the nine to five, or they didn't want to try to do the nine to five, or one of their friends or siblings had got into an altercation that got them dragged in. So obviously, it was, it was just very rough, in it. Um, to this day, like, the area's rough. They're doing, obviously, you know, the whole gentrification and all that, but, like, in total, like, it's very, um, it's always been rough, in it? So, obviously, considering my household was obviously just my mum managing three boys, it's not an easy thing to do as well. Obviously, luckily, my brothers never really fully got involved and they were just very focused on football. Football, football, football. Um... But yeah, man, to this day, a lot of my friends are are, are, are still like, involved in whatever it is they're doing. Um, but as I said, innit, it's not something for me to judge. I can't judge. I can't say, you know, I'm any better than them or anything, innit? It's just, you know what, they, for example, they view the situation, you know, cool. I came from a single parent household. Um, we, keep, we grew up in a rough area. Our only options was you either rap or you play football. Because realistically, that's what it was back in the day. Now you can get rich off TikTok. You make TikTok, you're blown. But obviously before was just, you know what, it's either you play football or you rap. Or you go to uni. That's what I'm saying. And not a lot of people around here went to uni. Well, yeah, not a lot of my lot went to uni anyways. You know, it's only some of the older lot that decided, you know, the older they got, let me just complete it. But overall, it wasn't a that thing, innit? So... Yeah, man, but obviously, you already know, man, we have grown up, we see it all, we've seen it all from early, innit? A lot of us had to grow up from young, innit? A lot of us had to grow up from from early. We was kind of forced to, but, yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. I remember, the stories I remember, everywhere, man. Yeah, no, I remember, uh, no, no, it's calm, no, it's calm, it's, it was actually all really right. And I remember the, I remember the growing up as well, like, in the, when you grow up in the ends, obviously, uh, you know, Depend on what you're kind of, you were probably exposed to more than I was exposed to. Obviously, I grew up in the South, innit? Um, and you don't really see the, I, I don't really see much of the South. gangs. They were, <laughs> get the freak out of here. <laughs> no, you, 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 you see, you see, Batsy, innit? Batsy. It was calm. It was, no, it was some, but it was, it was less, it was, it was less, it was more behind the scenes. They were doing their things. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't necessarily in my face. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily in my face. And so obviously you start seeing, you do see things, right? So you see people getting shaked down. You know the ones where you come back from school? Niggas are going to come and shake somebody down. You know, you sh- remember the shakedown on the, on the blazer? <laughs> what you got for me, fam? You shake the blazer down, see if, it's gonna, if yeah, coins man, are going to flip. Fam. When the guy the line people up, good time. Yo. Come back school. It'd be the olders outside. You look line up over here. All of you look. Check your pocket. Empty your pocket. Who's got something for me today? You understand? You know me lining up pockets and that. You see that stuff and it's raw, fam. You don't know what's there. It's raw when you see them kind of things there and you see man get beat up. Um, you see, uh, I remember one time as well, but man, I saw a man got sliced and diced, bro. Fam, that's the first day I ever learned about not snitching. Because fam, I saw that's what I said, when the priest comes to me, I was like, yo, fam, it's that guy. <laughs> they were like, you know how to snitch. I was like, what's snitching? I don't know nothing about snitching, blend. All I know is I saw what I saw and we tell the polo what I saw. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you start to learn 
the street ethics and the codes as you're on as you're playing about and young and you know what i'm saying and seeing certain things and i think obviously mm -hmm. i remember i remember uh, do you ever get approached to join a gang um not personally but obviously Mad. my like my brother's age group in my area in our area like the gangs when they was like at their peak yeah obviously now they've got bare new youngers and that but when there was like the main lot for my side they were very prolific <laughs> so <laughs> um, they went school they <laughs> they went school with a lot of like the like main guys from around here and that and obviously like there's times that my brothers like were running around with them but it wasn't too intense because they still really wanted to play football so in my era it was never do you know what come and join the gang we're starting a gang come and join it's just a thing where you've grown up with man um you've grown up with people that you see on a daily basis and you lot just chill together every day like, you might go to the, the state bus road and just chill with them so I'm saying it, and there was a period when we all started like buying bandanas, and um, so like I said, oh, today I'm buying a white, I'm buying a white bandana because in my area it was either you had a um, a white bandana, there was a paint, there was red, there was pyro, there was whole so sorts of stuff. It was crazy, um, and obviously the purple. So we just used to buy those bandanas, and obviously um, over time, you remember when you're younger, like it's just obviously it's just playful stuff. Like we're seeing mm. it, we're hearing it, but then the older we kind of got certain people were like oh like really realistically a lot of men were being groomed in it mm. um but obviously it's not a thing where you'd understand because you just think you know this is the big homie like this is my big mm. brother this is a guy I look up to so you're not seeing as grooming um and obviously that's what i see with the work i'm doing now it's like i'm trying to show these lot because like do you know what grooming is and they're like, they will they will basically explain to you like their friendship circles and what's going on and they will literally be telling you word for word i'm being groomed but then if you ask them, are you being groomed? Would you understand grooming? They'll say, no, no, I'm not being groomed. I can't be groomed. And it's like, that's what I'm saying. Because sometimes like, it's not stuff that you need to understand. So it's mm -hmm. like, no one ever had to ask you, come and join a guy. All it had to be, a man's giving you a pair of trainers or buying you food every now and then. And then one day it's like, oh, do you know what? We're going to go and ride out on the other side. Do you want to come? If you're gassed that day, you jump in the car, you jump in a pedal mm -hmm. bike, you go. But if it's a, oh, it's a, take this phone, I'm saying we're gonna start we're gonna start starting we're gonna start selling drugs we're gonna we're gonna do it and especially as i said a lot of people come from houses where their parents they couldn't ask their mom buy me a pair of trainers mm. but if there's an older boy that's in the area that's like do you know what bro do this you can get 100 pairs of jordans your mom they even have to know where you go from and mm -hmm. it's just that in it so i that's why we never ever had to get asked to be in a gang like you never had mm. to say oh come join a gang but it was always that pressure in it like that indirect pressure Mm. Right. And yeah. you mentioned about the the grooming because obviously when you deep it, obviously it reminds of uh, the the Tinder swindler, right? Because it's the same thing, it's the same principle. It's that uh, I'm gonna do things for you, yeah. all right? Make you feel some way, and then I'm gonna something mad's gonna happen to me. I'm gonna call upon you, and obviously you as a human being feel the need to mm -hmm. to obviously respond because the person's done some things for you, you know, done some favors for you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera um so yeah you're right like that's it's a, it's a form of grooming i kind of miss a lot of that stuff because like i said i i think the man them you know what i, I guess maybe it's a prayers of our parents bruv because a oh. lot of that stuff i kind of missed i remember I, I remember a gang was in that area they were beefing goons in mitcham so uh, other part of south they were, there was whole little beef there and, the, and my gang in my area came up to me and was like brother we want you to join looking at like I said, do I feel you or do I feel my mum? <laughs> I feel my mum. Please let me go. Yeah, let me go back upstairs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was like, fam, it's just not for me. Do you know what I mean? I'm looking at these goons doing mm -hmm. stuff, and I'm like, it's not really for me. And uh, I was scared of my mum. So you know, the beating I would have got if I come home and one day, you know, even that, my mum, mum and dad would never let me take anything from anybody. If I came home with something, mm -hmm. they'll ask where did that come from. It's got to go back, mm -hmm. right? At, at the time, you're not thinking about it. You're just thinking. Like, let's say if your friend gave you something at school, right? Your friend gave you something mm -hmm. at school. Like, let's say, like, someone, your friend gave you a toy or whatever. And you're like, mom, yeah, my friend gave me this toy. Nope, it's going back. And like, why? No, nope, it's going back. You don't deep it at the time, the dangers of that particular aspect. And, of course, it's your little friend. It could be a little friend and it generally could be a little friend that you have at school. But they don't know that specifically. Do you know what I'm saying? And they don't know what other kids' mindset is. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Towards you. But in your head, you're thinking... Sure. Like mum and dad are, are moving mad back crazy blood. You know what I mean? <laughs> Were you never tempted though? Was it not one part of you that was like, do you know what? Like, 
let me get involved or like oh like this might be cool or, mm. the littlest part of you like mm, why not or is it just never <laughs> uh, so it's not me i'm so scared of my parents it's not happening no nah, it was just never me man just never me it was just never me i just mm. i wanted to play football i wanted to dance and i wanted to impress girls which were not going to be impressed by me i mean uh, gang life did, for me didn't make sense. Do you know what's mad though, fam? Do you know what's really mad, fam? Though, well, the fact the mm-hmm. grooming that you're talking about, remember? I remember one, one of my goons. Still got love for him though. But one of my goons, I remember, fam. Uh, it was like, I remember um, I used to chill with him all the time, innit? And I remember one day, fam, I went to one of our, one of our boys, one of our, our oldest cribs, or whatever, fam. Man, these guys are just watching porn, blood. Now this point, I have no clue what porn is, blood. I, I had no clue at that point what porn was right and i remember sitting there and watching these two people do this thing and and after about five minutes, i said i don't want to i don't i don't want to watch this this doesn't make sense like i don't know why i'm watching it like it it don't make sense so i got up and i said bro i gotta go he was like bro where you go i'm saying now i gotta go man bro i gotta go like i don't need to be here like you man chill here fam whatever whatever and i went but it's stuff like that you don't realize from like you were saying about the oldest getting another girl i remember i said oh i like this girl he's like listen i can get you some girls you sleep with them bro and did it and at the point you're not really deep in what is actually got what man's saying to you know man is saying he's gonna get grown-ass yeah, gal yeah. to come and sleep with you had it not been for the fact that i think i was scared about a lot of things <laughs> i was just scared you know what i mean and um, maybe i would have done a bit more but fam i was just like nah it's not for me mm-hmm. it's not for me I, I couldn't do it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh, were you tempted? Were you drawn in by uh, you know the, yeah. the the gang life and the fast mornings? You know what? I'm gonna lie to you, man. Same 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 thing, G man. It it just wasn't me, man. Um, in terms of gang thing, like in terms of running guys down and stabbing this guy and shooting this guy, that never appealed to me. Yeah, at never all, appealed to me. At no point. Um, it's just not me, in it like. There's, they, I just don't think there was there was no one out there that would have made me angry enough to think I need to end this person's life especially mm-hmm. considering none of my obviously some of my close friends were stabbing that but it's not like I have to like for example if something had happened to my brother and at that point I was like I must get revenge it's different um, but it's just like it, it was just never me in it obviously 100% obviously with the, the drag stuff bear in mind we still got the fraud guys as well. So there was still fraud as well. It was a bit cleaner. It was cleaner, safer. Um, it was cleaner, <laughs> innit? So we had the fraud, we had the fraud guys, we had everything around there, man. All the crooks. Um, mm. so all of that hundred percent it did. It always did. Because as I said, bear in mind, we all came from places where our mm. parents couldn't give us obviously they gave us what we needed, obviously roof, beds, the, the clothes we needed it. But in terms of like stuff that we wanted, like, so they could give us our basic needs, but they couldn't give us mm. our wants. That was always appealing. To, but I'll be real with you, man. There's some days, I, to this day, I'll be like, yo, you don't enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, you don't enjoy it. But nah, nah, but for real. But yeah, but it was always, it was always there because it's always in your face. I'm saying considering that these are friend, like, friends, I'm still actively seeing um, on a daily basis. So before you used to be like, do you know what? Why not? Why not? But I'll tell you why I didn't get involved though. Um, mm. Because one time I came back from, I can't remember where I came back from. I don't even know if this was uni. It could have been wherever. So I was with some of my friends. Um, by this point, they were like doing drop-offs to, so they were, still, they were selling drugs to um, addicts. So they were like, oh, Riz, come in the car. They were just going to go and get some food. So I was like, okay, cool. So when we've gone, but they're like, they're making a quick stop off. So the window was going to, when they was, when they was handing over, whatever they were handing over, like, I've seen the people come to the car. But when I saw like the effect on the people, like they had already been using drugs that day. So when I saw it and I was like, right, you know what? This is someone's mom, dad, brother, nephew, niece. Like I'm saying, I was like, I don't want to do that to someone else just so I can get something to boost my ego. Because realistically, when it just wasn't me. That's why, for example, this day, I don't judge people that work in betting shops, but I know some people are addicted to, to gambling. So I couldn't work in a betting shop. That's just me. Um, so I, it was just the whole effect on other people. I was like, you know, if I'm going to do something to mess up someone, let it be myself. But I don't want to have to be a thing, a thing where I'm messing up other people mm. um, to get what I want in it. That's just not me. So that's why I kind of said, you lot, do your thing. Uh, get some of you lot feel like 
it's the only thing you can do right now. I've had, I've, I've spoke to some of my friends. I'm like, why? Like, how long do you think this for? Oh, if I get off the road, what else can I do? If I if I stop selling drugs now, what do I have to show for it? So I'm mm. saying, and at the same time, I can't tell them, oh, go and work a nine to five, and they're probably making what I'm making a week in about half a day. Mm. So, so I'm like, cool, oh, I hear it. But I just said, for me personally, as appealing as it may be, is you got to think about, okay, what is it that I'm doing it for? It's just for like material stuff, maybe. Um, and I'm like, I don't mind waiting. <laughs> I don't mind waiting, mm. but at the end of the day, for other people to, to get what I want, that just wasn't me, man. That's why I kind of just stayed clear from it. Mm. Yeah. So obviously you had, you had those those kind of influences, like myself, kind of potentially trying to push you in a certain direction. You kind of pushed back on it and, you know, you chose you chose a different path. Um, obviously you go to school, go to university as well. Um, get your degree, you know, and then this is the crazy part. The degree part is like you do your three years of university, you get your degree, um, you know, you uh, get your you get your end of year certificate, end of the three year certificate, and then you're looking for jobs, bro. Because I don't know about you, fam. I don't know. I can't say that it literally was said to me, but like verbatim. Bro. But I thought to myself. After university, I'm gonna get a good time job. I'm gonna start making good money. Life should be good, fam. It was not. You know the ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they weren't that bad at all. What was What was your thoughts like when you were going to university? Did you think it was gonna make your life better? Uh, should I tell you how I thought my life was gonna go? Mm. So basically, in um, year when I was in school, so I was with, I was in Tottenham Development, Tottenham Football Club. Tottenham Hotspur mm. development. So not this thing where people go to the colleges and they give you the uniform. I was in the actual Tottenham development. Oh, so, mad. Um, I know. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically every couple of months, like let's say every three months, right, we play against the academy in our age. So yeah. let's say, for example, we're under under 15s. Mm. We'll train, every, we'll train basically, we'll train, we'll train every week, every Monday. Um, and then no, it, was, it was more than once that we trained. So every three, four months, we'll play against the existing age group. So the actual official Tottenham Hotspur team of our age group. Mm. Mm. So um, we'll play them. So then they know, okay, who's who they're kicking out and who they're bringing in. Mm. So um, in my mind, it was always, you know what, football from year seven, once I reach year, once I go through college, I'm still playing football. And when it gets to university age, I'm either gonna be being a scholar, academy, or I'm gonna go pro. So I never thought about university. That's how I thought my life was gonna go. And the same thing linked to how we grew up because we wasn't on the road. And I told you back in the day was just, you're either rapping or you're kicking ball. Mm. So um, in my mind, I was so certain I'm I'm going pro. Um, I don't care about it. I'm not thinking about university. My life is not even a thing to me. So obviously life happens, ups and downs. It's never happened. Um, end up leaving the Tottenham Academy after having a bad game actually. But it wasn't that I wasn't good enough. It's because there was like discouraging words from like people, close ones around me. And I decided mm. to not play football again for like three or four years. Um, and obviously getting yeah a couple of years down the line end up breaking my foot and all that stuff in it so when i got to uni as i told you it was a thing i think i more went to uni because i i don't know what else to do mm. um i don't know what else to do and on top of that it's like i might as well because i already mm. got my uni and my college um thing i'm like i might as well go in it but i didn't know what to expect after uni um as well so that was a bit like oh, you know, this is crazy it was crazy, but yeah, man, I, I didn't want to go to uni. I can't lie to you, I didn't want to go to uni. I, to. Mm. I made it work. So okay, so like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of mad because obviously, like, for for the equivalent for the Americans, the equivalent they have is obviously NFL or basketball. So mm-hmm. that's our equivalent sport. Our football is there. Is it not baseball? Uh, 
base yeah, our football will be their baseball, their their basketball, their yeah, NFL, yeah, yeah, yeah. their their you know NHL, or hockey. Those are the major national uh, sports that they they have. If you you can make it, but normally majority NFL and NBA are the ones that we normally see. So it's yeah. like your equivalent of you doing the football development with Tottenham. It's like you starting doing and like you know the progression of of. American football and um and and basketball. So okay, so you okay, so that change of course. So you were looking to play football, thinking that you're gonna make it. Don't mm-hmm. don't get to where you wanna go get to, um, and then end up basically uh now just choosing university as a default. It's like, hey, I'm I'm all yeah. as well just go and just do education, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So when you when you finish university though, when mm-hmm. you when it's done What's when the I mindset think, like? Yeah, bro, brother. When you finish you when you finish it, cool. You know, like for example, when you're in university, you have half terms, you have co- Christmas holidays, like you have holidays. Uh, even though you're in university and it kind of does seem independent, you still have a very big safety net. Mm. Like you're still studying, so no one expects you to be working. Depending on your timetable. No one expects you to life doesn't expect you to be working. Yeah. Um. You've got student finance. You've got your parents. Your parents will understand if you're studying in uni and you need some money. I'm saying like, well, not everyone, but yeah, there's a whole savings. So it's like when you kind of finish university, it's like there's a big. It's like you they throw you into the real world. It's like mm. it's like be it's like being a soldier. Yeah. Well, to me, it felt like being an untrained soldier being thrown into like a third world war. It's like just go in there. I even told you how to use a gun, but just go into the war and fight people. That's how it felt for me. It just kind of feels like it's a very big extreme. I have the safety net to kind of feel and rah, you're in the big world. Go ahead and make mm. something of it, innit? Um, obviously, some people take guidance better, innit? Obviously, not everyone has a guidance. I understand that. So my thing was just like, yeah, do you know what? Life is real now. Like, it begins. So I'm saying. So it was just all of that and all the uncertainty of like, okay, do you know what? What happens now? Because I don't know what I want to do. Mm. And I'm still thinking about what do I want to do, what do I want to do, what do I want to do. And I had about three, four years to think about that. And I got to the end and I still didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, Bro, me. Still didn't know. So it was very, yeah, man. It was, it was a scary drop. Mm. That's how I describe it, a scary drop. You know, it's mad as well, because I remember like when I went to university, uh, I think it was just like a, that was just a plan, innit? Go to, that was the final end of the plan, which is, fam, go for education and definitely get to university. That's the plan, yeah? You, you go into university, bro. I didn't stay on campus, so obviously I was going back and forth, but you go through university, do it three years, you know, you're kind of meandering, thinking about what life is going to be, but you don't really know what life's going to really be. Do you know what I mean? Like you said, it's a perfect safety net because it's the, it's the, 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 the bridge between childhood and adulthood. You know what I'm saying? And depending on what you do in those three years, you know, you're going to have some various varying experiences that are going to benefit you, whichever way you look at it, going forth. And then, mm-hmm. so you come out, come out of university. I remember I came, I remember I came out of university. And I'm, uh, before we even like, finished, I remember my ex-girlfriend at the time was, I had spoke to her brother. Her brother had just finished university like two years before me. And he was like, listen, bro, I was searching for a job for six months. I'm looking at him like, yeah, that ain't going to be me. I mean, <laughs> I think I'm employable, blood. And, uh, you know, I think uh, i got some great skill sets. So I don't think I'm going to be unemployed for six months. I said, that's, I said, that's great for you, but it's not going to be for me. Okay, I'm going to find a job. And I, the funny thing is, I don't know even what kind of job I'm even looking for. What is a job? You know what I'm saying? Like, because fam, I don't know a job. I, got, I worked in McDonald's course, but what is a job? And I'm not talking about a McDonald's job. I'm talking about what is an actual job after you finish university? I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm going through finishing university, I finished university, done now. That's when the pressure really started because it's like, now there's no excuses, right? Uh, mm-hmm. You've got a degree. What do you do with it? You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to figure it out. Like, do I, I wanted to be an author. At one point, my parents looked at me and said, author? <laughs> <laughs> You want to be an author, <laughs> but you'll pay bills, <laughs> but you'll pay bills. So I don't know how you're going to do it, but you'll pay bills. So either you're working and you're doing offer, but you're not going to do author and sit in my house and not pay bills. So that was, mm-hmm. that was off the table to try and do author full time. Um, you know, uh, so that was what I was doing. And I just, I didn't, I just didn't know 
what to do, bruv. Because even though you got a degree, I had a degree in business. I, I don't know where that takes me. I don't know. I'm, I'm a, you know what I mean? I don't know what that meant to, where that's meant to go. As well. Yeah. Like as well. So it's not like, okay, you got a degree in business and let me go into business. It's like, what do you want to go into? I don't know what one's going to, bro. I don't know what mm. one's to. Do you know what I mean? Then you're seeing other people in your year <laughs> going beyond you, bro. Listen, when people are getting jobs, I'm just sitting there like, how long did it take you to find a job anyways then? Fam, it took me, <laughs> it took, I graduated in 2012, bro. It took me two years because I was working at McDonald's at the same time, the whole entire time. Money, yeah. yeah. So I had some money that was going in, but I didn't work there. I didn't work at McDonald's full time. When I finished mm -hmm. university, I said, I'm not working there full time. No, man. I chilled, bro. I chilled, enjoyed, I raved, I clubbed some more and <laughs> got <Okay>. saved. <laughs> Because yeah, yeah, there's nothing yeah. better to do. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, how you take the it? Job searching was mad. Um, <laughs> so when I finished uni, I was looking for volunteering opportunities um, in mm. uni at the time. So about like um, to help homeless people, legit. Mm. So I've asked calling places, but you know. You know, up in NN, like finding, going to places. If it's not in the town centre, you have to be driving out to places. So there's a lot of, like, I was trying to just, like, do a lot of volunteering opportunities to get experience. Um, when I finished uni, I was freelancing. So that's when I was doing full-blown mods, modelling. I was doing background extras. I was doing bare stuff, man. I was lit. Good time. But the only thing with that is, like, the money weren't stable. So, mm. um, same way like your parents saying, all fun, pay bills, blah, blah, blah. Like, it weren't <laughs> stable. Like, for example, I might get three jobs this month and might not get another job for like a, a good two months. Like I'm saying, no, well, it's a stretch, but it just wasn't stable. It? For example, I'm not going to wake up end of the month and have this, this, that, that in my account. Mm. It's, do you know what? I might do a job now and they might pay me in six weeks or four weeks. Or Damn. in the pain, like, just very unstable, wasn't it? But um, then I started dating this one lady. Like, <laughs> you know, um, but then I realized being unstable by yourself is all right. <laughs> so, okay, card, you know what? <laughs> it's all right. So then when I started actually. <laughs> they, 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 I realized because bear in mind before that I'd obviously anyone I dated I'd, I used to be the straight oh you pay for yourself I pay for me I was chilling but then obviously I got to person no if, I, if I'm taking a lady at a house let me pay so then it was this thing where when I realized okay I've got unstable income um, and I'm trying to date and I realized bro dating is a rich man's sport <laughs> so then I said you know I can't be free I can't do freelance work because it's too uncertain Mm. So then, when I actually tried to do a job search, I was actually searching for six months. By the way, like it, that's why I was laughing. It was actually six months. And the funniest thing is, when I got a job, we went into our first lockdown within the same week. Oh, man. So for six months, I was going for job interviews. I promise you, it was like a week when I was in, I was in like four or five job interviews. I'm in the rain. I'm wearing suits. I'm wearing shirt. I'm going to job interview. They're turning me down. Like I was actively, I was really searching, man, for like about six months. Obviously. This is my thing though. Obviously, I don't want it to be a thing where that's everyone's reality because it's not. It's not. Some people, you can really get a job within the same week. Fam? You can get a job in the same week. You can get a job in the same day. I'm saying because there was jobs that I could have done. I'm saying if I really wanted to do them. But in my mind, I wanted my future to look a certain way. So even if I might say it took me six months, maybe there was opportunities I could have worked in from earlier. But I just said I didn't really feel I wanted to do that. But yeah, but overall my search was about was about six months. So then obviously when I kind of got a job, um, that same week, Miss Corona decided I'm coming to flip the world upside down and <laughs> lock down that same week I got a job. I worked for five days. I mean locked down. So I waited six months to find a job, got a job one week, locked down. Damn. How, how did that? How did that take? How did that um, affect your mindset at the time? Because obviously, brother, like you said, you know, Whoa. like obviously, when you finish uni, like, and you obviously mm -hmm. now you're saying like you had a, if you meet a girl, you're starting to realize this is real man's game now. You know what I'm saying? Real Pressure's man. kicking in. What, what was it like? You know, Corona hits you. What are you thinking at that point, bro? Bro, <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm really tired. Bro, I'm really tired. 
um, to bear in mind, I told you, obviously, say for example, let's say for example, I would say, but at the same time, I still kind of try and do a freelance work. Like, say, say for example, I do three shoots this week. Yeah. I might not get paid all at once in four weeks. Yeah. Some might pay me, one might pay me in a week, others might pay me in four weeks, I might be in six. So it's, but let's say the girl wants to go, um, Hakkasan next week, mm. for example, with a lovely different restaurant, we wanted to go go ape, do something fun. And I didn't have that money in my account, even though I know it's coming, but it wasn't there. So um, over time, it was just stuff like that. I'm not saying that you can't date and not have money. That's not I what am. I'm saying. But at the same time, the stuff that you need to be able to enjoy for result, if you don't have money in your account, you can't travel. Mm. So I'm saying it's just little stuff. Um, and I kind of realized, you know, I don't want that for myself, especially if I want to date. Um, doesn't make any sense in it. Um, it just means I have to sort out my, per- my my own personal priorities. Everyone's different. Um, so then, yeah, man. But the girl I was dating was very high maintenance. Um, very high maintenance. And there's nothing wrong with being high maintenance either. But obviously at that time, it's not what I needed, especially if okay. I wasn't stable. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man, it was difficult. But at the same time, obviously when I, I was still kind of looking for jobs, but she knew I was looking for jobs. Um, but it was a thing where she even though she knew other for jobs like i'll be like oh i've got an interview today she'll be like oh you got another one <laughs> you got another one <laughs> another interview and over time it was like it was very like insane bro it's like oh you got another one oh how many job interviews you want to? i'm like bro like, what do you want to do you want to, you want to go and so look um so i was when like, will you yeah, collect man. job that's what she's asking no yeah, basically when would you collect job so it was a kind of like get a move on and i'm like I'm yeah genuinely trying to find a job so obviously you got to understand like on my mentor it went it, it went good it when she when good. she when she kind of alluded to that when you when you like obviously what you just said there when she's kind of alluding to that that kind of you can call it a slight dig or just call her just kind of just being a bit facetious on that time what does mm-hmm. that do to your psyche as a man though you know what i'm saying when you're Brother, hearing that it is very demoralizing like for example, <laughs> demoralizing. i, I love know that. bro it is <laughs> very much Cool. Maybe us have met, as men have set this standard that obviously not obviously we're providers by nature. Mm. It is what it is, but we've set this standard. You know, we have to swap everything. Mm. We have to. Women shouldn't pay for nothing. So I got into this bad mindset. Bear in mind, I'm not working a stable job, but I'm trying to pay for everything. I'm trying to pay for everything because that's just the mindset I've got. Um, but then it got to a point. It's like you no, know, you're really trying your heart. Like if I wasn't trying. I'm just trying to be bomb. I'm staying in my house and I'm not working. I'm not doing any jobs on the side. I'm laying down playing PlayStation. Then cool. I'm a bum. Or not, you know, I'm a bum. It's just that, okay, I don't have that drive to do it at that moment in time. Mm. I'm, not ser- I'm not serious. Mm. But it's like when you're actively going to job interviews, I remember there was one job interview and I had to go from, from North London to South, from South um, to like Surrey, to do the job interview and the job interview were outside in the rain and it's pouring down the rain i'm wearing a full suit loafers people are walking past me i had no umbrella and i was like i'm doing that and i'm coming back up to north london and you're telling me oh another job interview it's like bro it's like i'm really like trying so i'm saying i'm really trying so it was mad, bro but i was i was angry but the the maddest thing is obviously over over that time it's like she kind of stopped speaking to me, kind of. I'm saying like it kind mm. of broke down. It broke down. But I was trying to explain to her, like, I couldn't handle our situation because I'm so sorted. Like, for example, I know a lot of men, if they don't have stuff figured out, they go into this very closed off mode. I'm trying yeah. to sort this out. So then how we were, it was kind of it was breaking down because I couldn't communicate that to her. Mm. And I'm trying to say, because it's more of a, oh, you won't understand. But that's what mm. I got. If you're saying, oh, another interview, I'm assuming you're not understanding what I'm going through. Mm. So it was more of a thing where I'm trying to sort myself out, but while I'm trying to sort myself out, I'm neglecting what she might need or what she wants from me or what she expects from me. And I'm still not getting what I want. I'm trying to sort myself out and I'm getting rejected from jobs. I'm getting rejected from this and this ain't working and that ain't working. Um, and in the end, it broke down completely, innit? Mm. Um, but yeah, man, it was not good on my mental at all. At all. Do you know what made it worse? Do you remember? Do you remember the first lockdown? You couldn't do anything. You can literally yep. only jog or go to supermarket. 
yeah. when it was fully locked down. <laughs> and I that was terrible. All right, and it was hot as well. So mm. I'll, be messaging, I'll be messaging this girl, and I'm getting a response next day. <laughs> <laughs> she bear in mind, she's not working. She's at home on furlough. <laughs> so it was just nuts, and it's like. Bro, like then, then you start getting thoughts like, all right, you know, maybe if I had this, or maybe if I done more of this, and then it's more mm. of, like you're beating yourself up because of how life is going. Yeah. Um, and it's not it's some stuff you can't control in it. Mm. Obviously, thank God I did. Obviously, I worked three different jobs during that lockdown. So, um, but at the same time, I said not everyone has that drive. Um, I'm not saying I have the best drive and I'm the most motivated person, but someone could have just said, you know, because I didn't get this job and I didn't get this and this didn't work. I'm just going to be at home and be sad because it's not working. But it's like, what was I, driving you? I was saying, I want, I always wanted better for myself, man. Um, and in terms of bear in mind, the longest I ever stayed in the job was like before that was like five days. So <laughs> with like a couple of weeks, like if it's agency stuff. Um, so, so bear in mind, so I worked in two different supermarkets from when the first, when first lockdown started, I worked in one supermarket for a month and next supermarket for other month, and then I got my council job. So from lockdown, when everyone was a furlough, to this day, I haven't stopped working. Like I never mm. got to sit down at any point. Um, so it was just the more, it was a drive that, you know what, like, as I said, like, you've got to sort yourself out in it because I can't sit down and my mum's going out to work and everyone around me is going out to work and I'm like, oh, mum, let me get this money. It's like, why? I think it's more that thing like when you start working and you realise, you know what, that long day and you're like, you made it through that day and you realise that money from that day, imagine now you're asking your mum for this and that and you've gone through that long day and you know that's your mum's hard day of work mm. and you're asking her for that. And I said, you know, I don't, I'm not saying you shouldn't ask your mum for money, but I'm just saying it's like I didn't want her to carry that as a burden because now I, now I understand that work can be hard. So um, mm. and not everything is handed to you in it. So that was my my whole drive was just you know what, even if cool it came from a situation where um, yeah whatever the, the 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 girl discouraged me or whatnot is what it is in it. But I was still like I need to sort myself out in it. Um, and it's not even because of her like she don't owe me anything. I'm saying she's done me. She's she's done me a favor, mm. um, and I, so I'm saying that? so. Done me a favor because before that, before I was speaking, so I was chilling, I was cruising. As I said, freelancing, I was cruising. I don't think I need to do anything. Yeah, I'm working mm. my freelance job. I was cruising. Obviously, through that, through speaking to her, things break it down. I got a job. I got um, I got a job. I got my first car. Like it's all a lot of stuff that came from our situation breaking down. Mm. So I was like, okay, this is perfect. So it works perfectly for me, innit? Like, even if it's not a thing where I'm doing it so I can stunt on anyone, it's like, cool. It's kind of like, like realign my focus. Because as I said, I hadn't stayed in a job for more than like five days. But after this, I had stayed in one job for a month. I moved to another job for a month. And then now it's branched out. So I've been in a job for two years. So I'm saying, so it was just that whole progression. Um, and obviously just having, yeah, man, and I'm just... Just gotta be grateful for the progress, isn't it? I'm always grateful mm. for the progress. Do you know when, like, obviously, what what, what point do you think you reached bo rock bottom though? Which part? Which rock part bottom. do you think you from? Yeah, when did you, you know when what? did you hit that? When did you hit that bottom, bro? When did you, you hit that what, bottom? Bro, rock, rock bottom is very um depends how you look at it. So mm. I thought I hit rock bottom that um, <laughs> that time. <laughs> yeah, man. Rock bottom, rock bottom, circle rock. So at that point, um, how things went for me. Um, obviously, once I stopped speaking to a girl, and, I, and obviously, I kind of lost my job, and I wasn't getting paid. Um, and at that time, I couldn't do freelance work because you couldn't do no modeling jobs, nothing. Everything was locked down. I went into this very um, dark space where... Um, What's dark? I What's the dark space? Dark, as in, I, I deleted social media for about two months. Two months. I remember that. Yeah, I disappeared for like two months. Um, I stopped speaking to everyone. I literally worked, I just worked for, um, yeah, just worked for those two months, not speaking to anyone, tried to go, tried to speak to a therapist, lasted two sessions, cancelled it. Why did you go um, to a therapist though? Because you know what it was? I just think, yeah, at that time, I never really understood what therapy was or what, you know what I'm saying, I didn't really understand it, but I just know I need to speak to someone and it's, got, it's linked to what I'm speaking about, the area that we grew up in. And this is a conversation we've had before, but 
the area we grew up in, like to speak about how you feel, is like, bro, like, why are you being, like, why are you moving like that? Why are you moving soft? Why are you moving this? Why are you moving that? So it's a more thing where I think it was just built up stuff from probably the years. And it's like, if we kind of used to run around saying, oh, no emotion from a king. If you show emotion, everyone's giving you side eye. So it was just that thing. It's like, okay. Um, so basically I got offered the therapist through um, some youth service in my area. And they're like, we can get you therapy for free. But it was all, everything was over the phone. So I was like, mm, didn't really like it, cancelled it. So obviously after like those two months, I kind of came back, got a new, got my, got my new job and obviously I was back up, um, back to being myself again. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously I thought I was rock bottom. No, no, to be fair, that, it was kind of, kind of rock bottom. It was, it was rock bottom for me at the time. Um, but obviously you understand that 2020, 2021, like there was like, a lot of stuff that happened obviously in my life, in my family's life, like in family, in life. Um, with obviously other women, with finances, just with everything, can it? And obviously with myself, and obviously going through twenty twenty one, I will say I hit rock bottom, end of twenty twenty one. Rock bottom. I was what do, what 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 bottom look like? Rock bottom for me looked like bro. I couldn't breathe. Um. So basically, hey, what rock bottom looked like for me? It was. It was not rock bottom, more. Huh? But at the bottom of the sea, if you can't breathe. Bro, I couldn't, hey, bro, I couldn't breathe. Um, so basically, it was more of a um, everything. So I had this conversation with my friends. Like every, I just kind of felt everything was just super um shaky in it. So my finances were doing a lot. My love life was doing a lot. My family was just um a lot of family stuff that was happening and was just shaking. Um, my job was stressing me out. Um, my mental health was in the gutter, which is a whole lot of stuff, man. It's like, I couldn't really see, I couldn't see past the day. Like, for example, if I woke up, um, one morning, I'm like, oh, do you know what? This is going to be a long day. And it's like, bro, I've got to do this for like, a, like, like another eight years. So I'm waking up. <laughs> so I'm waking up, like, I've got to do life again today. It's like, oh, another day. Like I couldn't see past the day. Like everything was cloudy. Like, do I even see anything positive happening tomorrow? Do I even see anything positive happening in the next hour? So I'm saying, so it's just stuff I just couldn't see past it, innit? Um, and it was up to the point where I just had like a, I had like a breakdown in it towards the end of 2021. Um, but yeah, obviously, luckily I had some of my friends talk me through it, um, which helped kind of speaking to your friends is great. But yeah, I kind of went through this process of when, you know what, I kind of went from bottling up everything to kind of being super open. So, <laughs> obviously coming from where we come from, as I said, you never spoke about nothing. So not speaking about anything, then turning around and then not being able to not say certain stuff was a lot for me. So I didn't have a cap. I went from not saying nothing to saying too much. Um, and obviously saying too much can obviously that can kind of be um, overwhelming for other people. As much as I might not see, as much as I never saw it, it was very overwhelming for other people. Um, obviously, especially there was another girl I was speaking to as well, lovely lady. Um, and I think it was very overwhelming for her as well, but to the point I couldn't see it as well. Um, but obviously linked to when, you say, when you say talking to a lady, were you talking to a, a girl? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, speak, speaking to a girl. That was that was that shady comment. No, no, no. Do you know what? Oh. It, no, 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 no. I was saying that because that's yeah. exactly what we're talking about. I think that would. I was talking about the other day on this channel about how us as men, and I'll let you continue in a second. Like yeah. when sometimes we don't have a, we don't know where to go to release what we're feeling, so we end up with a girl, and she becomes a therapist for a short while. She's thinking she's she thinks she's in a relationship with you, but you're like, nah, nah. You're in a relationship. With, I'm, you're my I'm therapist. therapist. Because I need no, a safe no. place to discuss it. Say I'll it, bro. be real with you, yeah? Okay, let's put it this. The girl I was speaking to before the latest girl was a girl that used to speak at me. And I would listen. So then the recent girl I was speaking to, she's a girl that used to be, she was very quiet, reserved. So I'd speak and she'd just listen. So I would speak and speak and speak and speak and speak and speak. And it became so normal to me that every time I see it, I would speak, 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 speak. But I think it's stuff that um, I'm releasing that has nothing to do with her. And I'm just speaking, 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 speaking. I'll see some of my actions and how 
I might be in certain situations or how I might see certain situations was a reflection of everything that I had built up because there was never really anyone I'd speak to like that. Um, and I think it got very overwhelming, but I never saw, I was like, oh, why are you trying to leave? Like, why are you trying to walk away? Like, why are you going, like, what, why, why don't you want to speak to me anymore? You wanted to hear me before, but now you don't want to hear me. But it's just this more thing, but um, just, I just wasn't as attentive as I was before to be able to realize, you know what, slow down, put a cap on it. Mm-hmm. Um, what, yeah, what did she do that made you feel safe? Apart from her not talking, what, what yeah. made you feel comfortable to share with her? Uh, realistically, I'll be real with you. Um, <laughs> so realistically, I'll be real with you. Uh, be real with you. Cool. What are you scratching your neck for? <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, no, so I'll be real. So basically, um, I wouldn't say I was the most affectionate or open person. So, mm. what my last situation was, it worked perfectly for me because the lady I was speaking to was very closed off. Um, could be emotional, they were nonchalant, and that was me already. So I said, bro, this was perfect for me. I don't have to do this, I don't have to do this, I don't have to do that, I don't have to do that. So when I started speaking to this new girl, it's like it kind of like forced me to be open because she was so reserved and she kind of wanted to hear what I wanted to say. And she really took into what into consideration what I was saying. I was like, okay, bro, do you know what? That's a safe space for me, isn't it? Um, especially considering that like, a lot of people in my life, I feel like, I'd be speaking to people, but it's like no one really listens. It's like, okay, we want to hear what you're saying so we can get so we can respond. Mm. Um, but she was very like, you know, I'm really listening. So I think it was just building that that bond on having someone that listens to what you're saying. And it's like, right, like, you know, I've never had that before. Um, especially in a woman. So I was mm. like, okay, this is this this is sick. But then I think that like, obviously, as I said, I went from being so closed off um to being super open and not having um not being able to put a cap on it and obviously that affecting my behavior and just all different stuff in it so that's why i think it was that in it and yeah man big up her man mm. when, so, she, yeah, when she when she was when she was when she was listening to you or saying that she really wanted to hear what you wanted to say mm. how that make you feel man how that how that, how that affect well, you when she did that me? It made me feel good, man. I'd be real with you. It made me feel good. Like, for example, like, even little stuff, like, she'd do little stuff, like, she'd mess with me. Oh, do you know uh, what time are you home from work? Like, I'll bring you some food. Like, this is the stuff that I really get. So I'm saying, like, even if it's little stuff, like, I might say, oh, do you know, I want this, I want that, in passing comments, like, she might she might try and get it, even if I want to let her get it. But it was just that thought that, right, do you know, someone is actually thinking about how I feel. Because I think I always go through my life thinking of other people, trying to mediate and trying to be there for other people, and trying mm. to be that peacemaker and sort out everyone else's problems, regardless of how I feel in it. Mm-hmm. So even if I feel trash, I want to sort out everyone else, <clears throat> see how everyone else is doing and not take time for myself. But then with her, it wasn't, oh, I have to sort, I have to try and help you, I have to do this. But it was more of a, right, do you know what? She's not telling me to do that. Whereas I felt like everyone else in my life was very demanding. Um, well, anyone around me directly, but she was just very chilled. And I think the only place I can say I felt super chilled. Yeah, um, I'm guessing that sense of stability, innit? Especially mm. like when your life is chaos. If you have a place that's like a safe haven, um, it helped me in it. But then I think I projected a lot on her. A lot. Mm. Was it difficult uh, starting that pro? Was it difficult starting? The process of kind of sharing things with her or was it just quite just quite simple uh, so, so i tell you what helped me and this is very funny because i started i used to jerk that like, before I, um, I started to journal journal journaling helped me a lot by the way yeah, it's bad. Um, Trust me, I love a journal. journaling helps me a lot yeah so um <clears throat> then my thing was i used to write i have a journal i don't even know if you see it i had an actual physical one somewhere here i've got like so many of them now so i used to write but then my fingers used to get tired so i used to say do you know what this is crazy. I used to go on the train and write on the journal. Um, because I never used to speak to anyone. So these are just journals I used to read back just for myself. Mm. Um, then I just started using my Apple Notes. So notes on my phone. Same. So notes on my phone, notes on my phone. But then sometimes, I think one time, um, I gave one of my phones away because I had two phones. And my cousin signed out of my iCloud and it ended up wiping a lot of my notes. Um, so then I was like, Do you know what? 
I can't be bothered to do this anymore. So that kind of went back into this place, just not really taken into consideration how I felt. So what mm. I've done was very funny. So I down <clears throat> not funny, but I downloaded Twitter. Yes, I made a burner account for myself. No one's on it. And if I'm annoyed that day, I would just tweet to myself, I'm very angry today. And it was just a whole lot of anything I'm feeling, I was going to just tweet it. Um, but then over time, I will bring some of my closest friends. So there might be about 15 of them in there now. And anything that I tweet and how I was feeling and this and that, I will just tweet it so they can see it. And I can see it. Um, and it's just my closest people. So then there's a lot of stuff that they'll be like, okay, we never knew that you was going through this. So we never knew you was going through that. So it's like, we wouldn't have to sit, see each other in person and we're having that conversation because they already know how I'm feeling. Um, but then obviously the more I kind of done that, the more open I became with taking that from that safe burner account to my life. And now I'm having conversations with my friends in person, like, bro, do you mm. know what? This ain't working for me. Or I'm not really feeling good today. Or I'm not really feeling life this month. That's what I'm saying. So then it was just this whole little steps of just talking, 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 talking. Um, so funny, because even from then, a lot of my friends had become open from that. Um, even some, you know what I'm saying, a lot of my friends have become open from that, or more open. So it's been it's, it's been a good journey, innit? So now, obviously, so by the time I started speaking, obviously to this girl, I was able to um, to to communicate well, innit? Um, I wasn't the best, but in terms of I was able to communicate. But at the same time, I had to learn how to be. Um, you can communicate all day long, but if you're not clear and assertive on what you want to happen, then you're kind of stuck in it. So I still mm. think that's still something else I need to see. So then I got from a place where I was like, okay, cool, I can communicate. I can tell you this, I can tell you that. But at the same time, I'm not being assertive and standing and being steady on exactly it is that I want. But it was interesting. But now I just be talking to everyone. It's so funny, when I suppose my therapist, she says, you seem pretty open already. I was like, yeah, because I've been speaking to everyone for like the past three, four months. It's like everyone knows everything. I've said everything. I have nothing else to say. So, so I'm saying, so it's been interesting. So I'm not, I'm not, I'd say I was very emotionally unavailable. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm emotionally available. Love that. I'm emotionally available now. So, yeah, man. Love that. Love that. Do you know what? I'm interested. I guess we've got last few minutes because we're going to, maybe we can another week uh, we can talk about some more stuff but i'm interested in in the in the fact that you said you didn't have nowhere to kind of say how you felt mm -hmm. i, I want to kind of tap into that a little bit because i think if we're going to help men climb from the bottom i think this is one of the biggest pieces aside of getting your money up and if not we can discuss that another week about how we yeah, did career-wise yeah, to grow in that mm -hmm. but this emotional piece is probably the biggest piece i think for any of us as black males Mm -hmm. Why do you say that you felt like you had nowhere to 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 say what how you felt and stuff? Like, describe uh, a little bit of that kind of environment for me. Okay, cool. Let's put it. Um, if you're in an environment and you're around people and everyone is saying, "Oh, you should be emotionless," because we live in this society, we live in a, a time where the, every, all the guys want to be oh, nonchalant and oh, well, I'm too big and bossy to talk about how I'm feeling. Um, it's like, or for example, I'll tell you one thing with me, yeah? Um, anytime I spoke about how I felt, I get called emotional sensitive. Mm. As a man, listen, let's be real. You're human. You have emotions. You're going to be sensitive at some point. But to hear, oh, you're emotional, you're sensitive, it seems like a violation. It shouldn't be, but that's what it seems like. So then it was more of a cage, okay, you know, I'm trying to talk, yeah? I'm trying to tell you how I feel and it feels like I'm being dismissed. So then there's no point of speaking. Mm. Um, then a lot of friends, if you speak to a lot of people, oh, there's no point of speaking because there's nothing you can do to change whatever it is I'm feeling. But then I realized as well at the same time, it's like, at least if you tell people, okay, this is what I'm going through, at least they can handle you well. They can handle you different. For example, if my friend is just moving very erratic and cussing and, and 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 just doing all sorts of crazy stuff and i'm like bro listen what's going on and you told me bro i can't lie to you i don't like how my life is i don't like how my pockets look my baby mama stressing me out this is stressing me out at least i know you're stressed out because of this 
Yeah. Mm. So then I know if, for example, you have an encounter and you do with me or you say something or I see how you move, I know, do you know, I can't take that personally. Why? Because he's expressed how he felt. And I know mm. it's probably nothing to do with me. And it's a bigger struggle that's bigger than us. So I'm saying it's something that he is dealing with. So at least I know that. But then when it's a thing where it's like, oh, do you know, oh, I'm not going to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Then it's like, bro, then why is it a feeling that? But yeah, I think it's just that main thing. It's like, do you know what? feeling that i feel like a lot of obviously for men i speak, i feel a lot of men have their feelings dismissed in it it's like we're not allowed to a lot of us are not allowed to feel like we're not allowed we don't have the time to slow down and feel mm. stuff in it um as i said some people if you're the man in your house you don't have the time to sit down and and well you do have the time but a lot of man men might feel they don't have the time yeah. to just kind of slow down in it um because you're just really trying to gather your just trying to grab a stick, you're trying to sort this out, you're trying to do this, you're trying to be here for that person, you're trying to, you're trying to be there for your girl, you're trying to be there for yourself, um, you're trying to make money, you're doing mm. so many things at once. I'm not saying women ain't, but you're trying to do so many things at once, but then a lot of times, guys, a lot of guys don't even know that they ain't, they ain't okay. Because really, mm. see, as I said to my friends, you don't have to sit down and speak to your friends about real life. Why? Let's just decide to get a bottle of Hennessy, for example, let's go for a drink, or let's go and play football. Or let's go and do this. We don't have to talk about anything serious. You don't have to. I'm saying, why? Because you lot are just doing something that you probably bond over. You don't have to speak about anything. But then at the same time, you're still spending time with your friends. But you don't know what's talking about anything. You yeah. don't have to because you're having fun or you're enjoying yourself. But it's more of a distraction because when you leave your friends and you go home, you still feel I'm how you feel. And your yeah. friends and the people around you don't know what you feel. I'm saying so then you're kind of probably beating yourself up and it's like do you know what you're not the only person that's going through it or not say and, and another big thing i'm going to say a lot of people have this mentality oh there's probably someone that's going through worse mm. someone that's going through worse and my thing and i told the guys this all the time people say stuff like oh whatever you're going through there's people going through worse yeah and this is my thing about people having their feelings dismissed i might say I'm struggling to, to save money. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. Let's just put it that way, yeah? I might be affected by it. But someone might say something like, oh, but there's people that are dying and have no food and money in, I don't know, Africa, somewhere in Africa. So why are you complaining? But then you're like, okay, do you know what? It's true. There is someone going through us. But then my mm. thing is, if there's a situation in your life and you throw away by it, then you feel a way about it and no one can take that from me. If I come home from work and my brother's eating the food I've left in the fridge and I'm angry about it, no one could turn around and tell me you can't feel angry and upset about it because it's minor. Because if you're saying it's minor, who's it minor to? to it's minor to mm -hmm. you, but to me, I feel it. So it's come a on. thing where a lot of guys might be like, oh, you know, I don't feel like I can talk about this and da 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 because there's probably someone that's going through worse and this is probably minor, but no, because if you feel about, if you feel away about something, then obviously it's important to you. So I'm saying it's important to you, regardless of how minor it is, regardless of if you're telling me, I don't know, a woman is not responding to your message and you don't feel like you're going to, regardless of what it is, if you feel away about something, you feel away about it, it and don't let anyone take that from you because at the end of the day, you know how you feel. Mm. So I'm saying. So, um, but that's the nice thing, isn't it? Get around people that don't dismiss how you feel. Acknowledge how you feel. And obviously, if there's any ways that you can try and, um, I don't know, man, find peace with it or try and sort it out. Any ways you can sort it out, then you do know how to remaster, like you know how to kind of maneuver around it, innit? You know what I'm saying? So, mm. yeah, my thing is just obviously don't let people dismiss how you feel, innit? You feel the way how you feel. And that's how I'm starting to see things. Mm, I love that. Um, I love how you kind of brought it to that kind of conclusion in terms of the dismissiveness, either from external parties or from ourselves internally, you know, not giving ourselves a time to, or the chance to express ourselves. Um, maybe when we have our part two, we can discuss a little bit more in terms of exploring more in terms of being able to, you know, you know, those, those initial conversations, how they, how they're shaped, how they look, you know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. 
you know, and, and the benefits of those kind of conversations. I know you touched on that a little bit as well when you were speaking about the young lady that was in your life at the time. Um, I know we didn't speak about necessarily being at rock, rock, rock bottom per, proper, proper, but that I think that's a good place to kind of yeah. bring it to enter to do a part two and, and maybe discuss a little bit more, take our time with it, do you know what I mean? Because I think it's yeah. such a big piece, um, the emotional aspects, because it's tough, man, for us, man, then, man, to... Yeah, it's not black and white. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's not. Right, it? It's not, oh, just go over it. Because a lot of us is, okay, just go about your business, get on with it. But it's not just a get on with it type thing. Like, the same thing, a lot of my friends I speak to, like, a lot of guys probably are depressed and they don't understand that they're depressed. Why? Because they're just told to get on with life and they can't slow down. Some men might have PTSD from their friends being killed or from stuff that they've seen growing up Ooh, and they haven't had a chance to sit down and challenge it. So then, they're just navigating through life and they're traumatized and all oh, they're depressed and there's a lot of stuff that they're going through that they can't mm. channel because you're going to get called sensitive or this or that or that or they don't feel that anyone could change or help with how they feel and, and that's why it's just like we're just not going to speak about it Then you're not going to speak about it then that affects how you navigate through life isn't it? Mm. But yeah man it's a lot man it's a lot for sure man it's good food for thought, man. Good food for thought. We'll do a part two, man. Don't worry, we'll do a part two, brother. We'll get you we'll get you involved, man, because uh, you were shutting out some true words there, brother. Before me. Rizzi, I appreciate you, man, for coming aboard. Listen, we'll do a part two so we can get you some more. You already know, cuzzy. You know what I'm saying? Stay yeah, handsome. Man. You already know, man. We got we got we got <laughs> we gotta talk about rock bottom. <laughs> we gotta talk about rock bottom, man. Um, <laughs> the real rock bottom. <laughs> the real rock bottom, man. The 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 raw rock bottom, man. Because um, there's some raw things in there. Yeah, man. At the same time, man, there's 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 no theory in it at the end mm. of the day, but you don't live life on paper. You don't like you don't live life. Um, there's no one way in books. There's no one way. Something might work mm. for me, but there's some people that genuinely might think, you know, I just feel like I'm stuck here in it. But maybe I don't know, man. You talk about a lot of stuff that might help people, man. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I appreciate it, brother. We'll we'll Thank you, man. More. We'll get yeah, there. We'll, we'll you there already know, sure. family. We know we'll continue our little conversation a little bit after and things, so it's not a thing, fam. You know what I need to bring? <laughs> we need to bring, we need to bring, you know who? <laughs> 100%. 100%. 100%. We'll catch up with that, though. We'll yeah, catch yeah, up with for that. real. <laughs> We need to catch up with that one. <laughs> I'm gonna call you after, bro. Hey, <laughs> yeah. audience, yeah, appreciate you guys. Stay <laughs> lots of learning, man. <laughs> We're gonna talk.